Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing Unsold by Will White, which is the first book uh, in his Cradle series. And this was definitely uh, a different kind of uh, story for me and something that I thought was interesting and so I decided to try out. This is one that Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads has been reading and has really, really been loving. So I decided to give it a shot. And this is considered to be a progression fantasy, which is not something I've ever read specifically before. So if you're like me and didn't really know what that meant for the most part, it really just means that you're following a character who is leveling up as they go along, so to speak. And that's a huge part of the world that's set up pretty quickly. Uh, the, the first part of the story, uh, or really, I guess this book, takes place in the Sacred Valley, and we're following Wee Shi Linden, whose name I'm probably mispronouncing, uh, and I'm just going to say Linden is, is what they call him otherwise, but, so we're following Linden, who is an unsold, which means uh, when every, all the young children are going to be tested to see, like, what their magical ability will be, basically, he's got no response. The magic system that's set up is pretty interesting in this book. It's called Madra, and it's one of those, like, kind of like life force, like, it, it has to do with everybody in their core is made of Madra, so it's like a part of life. Uh, like, trees, animals, everything has Madra. And then the people who actually use it, who are called sacred artists, are able to manipulate it in different ways. There's different specialties, there's all kinds of different things. Like everybody can have like their special move kind of, so to speak. So it definitely reminds me a little bit of kind of like what I imagine anime would be like. Um, I say it like that because I don't really care for anime, which was another reason I've heard uh, a lot of comparisons between this and uh, like Dragon Ball Z among some other things. So that progression fantasy, starting off with the trope of the person who goes to be tested for magic. I was not thinking I was going to care for this book uh, as I started into it. Uh, and it did, uh, I ended up giving this like a three and a half. So like, I liked it. I thought it was good. I didn't like really like it. I was kind of like on the fence there uh, between a three and a four for me, which is still like I said, a solid rating. Um, but the, the second half is really what I enjoyed quite a lot more as we started expanding out and, and doing a little bit more with it. And it's kind of hard to describe without spoilers, so I am going to be getting into spoilers uh, in a short while here. I will note before that and have a timestamp so that you can skip past that uh, if you've not read this. But the base plot, once again, is that we have Lyndon, who is unsold, and he's basically trying to make it in a world where like children outrank him in like status because of the fact that he doesn't actually like meet the requirements of even the basic lowest caste system of sacred artists that part goes to and it explains quite in depth there are different levels including copper which is usually you know a child uh pretty young and then it goes up to iron which uh teenagers like early 20s usually is when most people hit that and then from iron it gets much harder where there's jade which is like the elders and like there's people who are crazy good and apparently there's also like the mythical gold status which is unheard of but would be just like supremely supremely powerful and so you there's a lot of description of the magic and the caste system and how it all works and like i said a lot of that is set up it does definitely feel a little bit info dumpy uh for the most part it does serve a purpose though and it's done in an interesting way where we are learning about the world um there is, I guess, I don't, I, I don't know how much I can say without it being considered a spoiler. So there are other reasons where we get info dumps for a specific reason as well. But like I said, I don't want to talk a ton about that too much in the non-spoiler section. But that's kind of the path that we're setting. Uh, it's my understanding that the series in general is going to involve him continually, you know, leveling up, uh, introducing a lot of people. And I had been told too, which makes complete sense when you read the book, that this is very much the setup book. Uh, this is really starting and it seems like things are going to really expand from here uh, and add a lot more to it. But this book was needed as the foundation. So I would just note that because being told that before I started, at least for me, was very helpful because I was keeping that in mind that yes, there are some things that are a little bit info dumpy. There's a lot being set up here and thrown at me. But uh, it sounds like it's just going to kind of shoot off from here. And I try to be a little bit more patient when I know specifically a book is a setup book. 
Uh, usually those books are not ones I enjoy as much, but you know, for example, with Faithful in the Fallen, Malice was very much a setup book. And then this series really took off from there. So I, I really try to, to keep that in mind. So that's why I wanted to make sure to note that uh, with it. But from here, like I said, this is kind of a hard book to talk about without spoilers. So I'm going to jump into some spoilers at this point and just uh, talk about uh, why I liked the second half of the book more and why I am interested uh, despite some of the uh, inconsistent parts in the beginning and just some other of my general thoughts, things I liked and didn't uh, that do involve spoilers. So at this point, check the timestamp uh, to skip past the spoiler section to kind of the summary wrap up of the whole video uh, if you've not read the book and don't want spoilers. So with that, the big thing, the twist that I did not realize was the case uh, when starting this, which I think is a good thing, which is why I'm saying it here. You find out pretty quickly, uh, but that there's like the world uh, of which the Sacred Valley is a very small part is, is what's called Cradle, and that's where the name of the series comes from. And it is like some of apparently the least advanced people, uh, even like these powerful magic users we find out are like nothing compared to other people that are outside of the Sacred Valley. And even those people who are like would be unbelievably powerful to the, the people in the Sacred Valley, even that doesn't even scratch the surface because we have like this interstellar uh, like police force basically who go between all the different worlds and make sure that the timeline stays in check. So a uh, really, really big type of sci-fi twist on what otherwise felt very, very fantasy-based with the magic system. So I was, I was interested to see where that was going to go. My only issue with that is we, we get, after having like the whole first half of the book being the build-up to, you know, the kind of classic tropey like standoff between Lyndon, who's going to try and fight and beat somebody who's much more powerful than he is, uh, through cheating and tricks and everything, but, you know, like that just classic, exactly you knew where it was going type trope. We have the entire thing get interrupted where, like, an evil elder uh, or something like that, like some creature who's... It was kind of unclear. It sounds like it was originally from the world, but also was traveling from another dimension uh, place, comes in and just starts killing people, and then we get Surreal, uh, who is part of this, like, police force. I can't remember the name, even though I literally just read this book. I'm blanking on the name of, like, the... And police force is probably not the right word, but they're, like, a ruling council, uh, basically, that control everything. And she comes in and, like, reverts... Stops and reverts the timeline, and then ends up, like, deciding to tell Lyndon uh, all about this kind of stuff and showing him what his future would be like and allowing him to keep his memories to try to save the Sacred Valley from the impending doom that's coming in like 20, 30 years. So he, he like begs her to let him so that he can get enough power in order to come back and save the Sacred Valley. And that's gonna set up as what the rest of the book is gonna be about. That for the rest of the book, he goes to one of the schools to find the Sword Sage's apprentice and escape with her, because that's what Surreal tells him he can do. And we get the feeling that we're going to go out of the Sacred Valley and then potentially in the later books, maybe even to different worlds is kind of the feeling. But the problem with that, although being a very interesting twist and something that did make me more interested and made me enjoy the second half more, it kind of made a lot of the first half of the book just seem unnecessary. We got a lot of info dumps, a lot of explanations on this cast system, these other things that really fit the first half of the book, but then we're just literally told, like, nah, that's all crap. These Sacred Valley people don't know what they're talking about. Their ranks are all off, and, like, everybody outside of here is way better than them. I completely am. Not only that, but also there's, like, these interdimensional places and your worlds for the babies, and it's just kind of like... Oh, so, like, I just, you know, read this whole first half of the book, which I didn't like nearly as much as the second half, and it's not as important anymore. Uh, so that kind of defeated it, but... Uh, I, I thought it worked too because the whole flash forward showing like what his life would have been like and where he actually would have had a pretty happy life uh, and like would have eventually progressed even though he was very underpowered would have like gotten married and been generally happy uh, until the cataclysm came but we're told once again that he, his whole point is he wants to save the sacred valley but then like for the after that for the second half of the book it pretty much just feels like all he really cares about is progressing himself because he wants to be unbelievably power for his own reasons. So I don't know if that's going to be explored, but it was another thing that it just, there was like a disconnect. The first half of the book, the inciting action that leads to the second half and the second half book, they all felt very separate. 
uh, and just didn't really seem to be super consistent. And so that was my biggest problem uh, with this first book. Now, I imagine I'll find it a lot more, and maybe, you know, all of the setup will still continue to be relevant. It's just with the book and the way that it kind of went, it felt like it wasn't. And I think some of that may have very well been intentional by Will White because he wanted to, you know, pull the rug out from you with just how crazy things were going to get. And like I said, the fact that uh, these people can, like, ask for reports, basically, from their, like, AI things uh, to tell them information about the world was a good explanation for the info dumps. And so I, I'm excited to see where this is going, but I was very on the fence with this book. Uh, if if the story would have continued as it was in the first half, this might not even be something I was continuing. Uh, the second half was interestingly interesting enough to keep me going, but it'll definitely depend on what the second book is like, whether or not I think this is something I will want to keep reading. I do have like the first nine books and I think that's the main arc but there are some like other ones but I, I got them all I think all of them for free on Kindle at one point when they were on sale for free for some reason the whole series. So I had them you know so it doesn't hurt me to continue reading or to not continue reading but that's where I was kind of on the fence. I think the bigger ideas that are being brought to the table are make it seem very interesting. There were a lot of really cool action scenes especially in the back half uh, with just seeing how the sword, sword sage disciple uh, can fight. And I can't remember her name either. I'm blanking on everything today, apparently. But, uh, gosh, I should have taken notes. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's like some of her fight scenes and the crazy things she was doing were really awesome. And just the, the magic system in the world in general, like I said, there was definitely enough to keep me reading, but I don't know how I will feel as I continue going on. And so that's why I wanted to kind of discuss those things uh, in the spoiler section so that it wasn't ruining anything, because I feel like to talk about the second half of the story at all, you kind of have to bring up the inciting bit of action and why it happened. So that's kind of where that is. But um, so that's kind of where I landed on Unsold. Like I said, I did enjoy it, and I bumped it up even a little higher than a three because I, there was a lot of good things, even though I had some issues with the first half and just with some of the info dumps and the inconsistencies. I think this was a, a good story, uh, and I'm interested to see where it goes and if it continues to improve as it expands or if it kind of brings back some of the things that I didn't like. Only time will tell, uh, but this was definitely, like I said, a book that I found interesting. And it just was quite different. I've been trying to try uh, some different stuff, some shorter stuff too, and just read more because uh, I've been reading so many larger books lately. So it's been nice to take a step into a few different things. Uh, and this definitely counts, I think, definitely as, as something pretty different, like I said, because of the fact that it's, it's not the typical type of uh, fantasy book that I often read. So those are my thoughts. Uh, make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description. Uh, for a link to the Wizardly Duo Discord, where uh, you can discuss uh, this book. There's, we have some huge fans of the series uh, in the Discord who have read uh, most, if not all. Uh, and also, we're always talking about all kinds of other stuff, too. So we'd love to have you. It's a lot of fun. And of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe.